Well, hi, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about preventing unintentional injuries. The problem we're facing with unintentional injury is that it's the leading cause of death for children and teens. That's a really serious problem. The most common unintentional injuries are car crashes, fire and burn injuries, accidental poisoning, recreational injuries, that's when you're having fun on different things like bikes or vehicles like that, and drownings. So we wanna address this problem head on by thinking about it as something that we can actually take action on. There are some things that you as a kid can do to prevent some, but not all of these. For example, you can't control whether or not an adult driver is texting and driving, but you can always wear your seatbelt when you're riding in a car. So while that texting and driving may result in a car crash, you can be sure that you're being as safe as you can by buckling your seatbelt every time you get in a car. Unintentional injuries used to be called accidents. They're called accidents because people said, well, that just happened or it was bad luck. But most of the time, they don't just happen, they're actually caused. They're caused by people who don't plan ahead or aren't paying attention to their own environment, the things happening around them. Many unintentional incidents can be prevented. Some are just accidents. We can learn to prevent many injuries by thinking ahead. We can take and play it safe, and we can always play in supervised areas. Some things that we can do and be sure we make a habit are wearing a helmet when skating or riding a bike, wearing a mouth guard in certain sports where contact is gonna be happening, following the rules of good sportsmanship so we don't get punched on a field or kicked or tripped, wearing clothing appropriate for the weather and activity, learning to swim and taking medicine only when supervised by an adult. We wanna look out. We wanna be aware of what's going on around us. Some bad things that we need to look out for are extreme weather. We never wanna be playing any outdoor sport when a thunderstorm is coming through, when lightning is out and we hear thunder. We need to be sure that we're not in the presence of a weapon or other people fighting. Bad things happen when children are around weapons or when there are fights breaking out. We need to look around the ground when we're playing in the woods or outside and make sure that we're away from any stinging insects or snakes that could cause us harm. We need to be careful around stairs and ladders. A lot of accidents happen around stairs and ladders. We can prevent them by being careful making sure that we're always around someone else when we're using ladders and being careful taking our time while going up and down stairs. Water is an area that we need to be especially aware of. Water-related injuries are the second leading unintentional injury resulting in death of kids. Drowning can happen in oceans, which you might expect, lakes, rivers, but it also happens in swimming pools bathtubs, and even hot tubs. Sometimes children are walking in fields, and you may be familiar with wells, but a well is a hole in the ground that uh, people dig in order to get water. Sometimes children have fallen in to those as well. We wanna follow water safety rules to prevent many of these tragic injuries and deaths. Learning to swim is very important. I'd encourage you to please take swimming lessons if you haven't and learn how to swim, but always be aware that even the best swimmers in the world have lifeguards watching them. You need to be supervised by an adult and when around water by a lifeguard. 
using a personal flotation device when boating, which is like um, a jacket, a life vest, um, is important and it's the law. Swimming with a buddy are helpful uh, water safety rules. We wanna make sure that we always have someone else around us anytime we're around any kind of water. You never know, you could be in water and have a cramp that would cause you to drown. Even the best swimmer in the world can't escape that. The do nots. Do not dive in a shallow water area. We never wanna dive where we could dive into the water and we could hit our head on the bottom. If you don't know how deep something is, do not dive into it. You can walk into it, swim into it, but if you are not positive of how deep an area of water is, don't dive. You can really hurt yourself uh, in your neck on that. No running at the pool or on docks. We've heard lifeguards say it. They say it all summer long. Don't run at the pool. When people run, they slip and fall and hit their head. And that's a, a real bad situation also. Never swim in stormy weather. Never swim where you hear thunder or lightning or see weather kind of picking up. You need to get out of the pool. And never play near a pool drain. Pool drains are very powerful and they can actually hold a person down at the bottom and you can't escape them. Don't play near a pool drain. And if you are at a pool and you notice that a pool drain cover is broken or missing, you need to notify adults immediately. Knowing and practicing these water safety rules can save you or someone you love from injury or death. A second area we need to really pay close attention to are weapons. Weapons include guns, knives, sharp blades, clubs, slingshots, and other objects that are used to hit or throw at other people. Weapons are dangerous. They're called weapons because they're dangerous. They can hurt someone even if it's unintentional, even if it wasn't meant to hurt someone. Sometimes children imitate behaviors they see on television, video games, or movies without realizing the consequences of what that weapon can do. We wanna be mindful here too of our younger brothers and sisters and friends. We wanna make sure that weapons are not anywhere near where those children or you are going to be unsupervised. Weapons should always be locked away in a gun safe, out of the eyes and reach and opportunity of any young child coming in contact with them. Don't forget, here's what we have to do. We should always seek help from an adult if a weapon is found. If a weapon is brought to school or a threat is made about a weapon at school, it has to be reported. That's the law. Guns should always be locked up with ammunition in a separate place. You never want to have guns and their bullets in the same place when uh, a child is around. Now we want to move on to talking about fire. If a building is on fire, you got to get out of that building. We practice fire drills when we're at school, and hopefully you and your family talk about what to do if a fire were to happen at your house. When a fire happens, there's more of a danger of people inhaling or breathing in smoke than actually a person being burned. Inhaling smoke is often the real killer in a fire. So we want to do our best to get low and get out. The best strategy is to hold your breath as best you can, though you will have to breathe sometimes. Stay low to the floor and get out of the building as directly and quickly as you can. That may mean breaking through windows, going outdoors, any way you can get out of the, the building, the house or the building you're in is important. We need to have a plan. Every family and every classroom should have an escape plan for fire situations. You should go over that plan with your parents, teachers, administrators, so you know what to do if a fire occurs. Fire drills, practicing fires, fire drills, should be taken seriously, so following the rules is automatic. We need that to be fast 
and efficient. Families need to designate a place to meet if there were a fire at your house. For instance, if you have a mailbox at the road, the mailbox is a great place for your family to agree to meet if a fire happens. We don't want someone running one direction and another family member running another direction and have them worry that each other are inside a burning structure. So we need to be sure we have a place to meet away from the house ahead of time. No one should ever hide in a burning house. You should get out immediately. Don't try and get anybody else. Get out of the house and go to that meeting spot. That's important. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. This is a heavy subject, but something you need to put thought into now so when you come in contact with a dangerous situation, you know what to do and you make the right choice. Have a good day.